The bisynchroninic acid assay, or BCA, is based on a very well-known reaction that takes place between copper and proteins in an alkaline medium. Once copper is reduced, it is then recognized by the very sensitive and specific BCA reagent, giving the assay its traditional violet color. Several amino acids, as well as the presence of peptide bonds, contribute to this reaction. When you perform your BCA assay, the first step is to prepare the working reagent, which comes from mixing reagents A and B. Reagent A is an alkaline solution, while reagent B is a copper solution. We recommend that you always use commercially available reagents whenever possible. Once you have prepared your working reagent, you're going to mix it to your samples, incubate it at 37 or 60 degrees, and then let it cool down to room temperature. At that point, you're ready to measure the absorption of your samples at 562 nanometers. Once you've measured the absorption of all of your samples, you can use a quadratic response to interpolate the data out of your standard curve. To perform the BCA assay, in addition to having your test samples, your blanks, and your standards, you're also going to need to have a spectrophotometer or a plate reader together with the appropriate cuvettes or plates. You will also need to have reagents A and B, which you can make yourself or obtain from a commercially available source. If you decide to run your assay using cuvettes, you're going to need 50 microliters of sample, and if you run them on a plate, you're only going to need 25 microliters of sample. Now keep in mind, we're not taking into account those three technical replicates that you should always prepare. This assay, just like every other assay that we have discussed, has intrinsic variability to it because the reaction depends on the composition of your sample and the amino acids that are present. Remember that the BCA assay is not compatible with the presence of copper chelators such as DTA or the presence of reducing agents such as DTT. It is okay to have detergent present in your samples. For a complete list of reagent compatibility, please make sure to refer to the data sheet of your kit or to the references present in the summary of this course. While the BCA assay still has intrinsic variability, it is considered to be extremely accurate, and it's widely used in a lot of laboratories nowadays. It has a broad dynamic range of 20 to 2,000 micrograms per milliliter, which can be adjusted to increase sensitivity when you perform it in a plate-based assay. That dynamic range can be adjusted to be between 1 and 25 micrograms per milliliter in that situation. This assay is fairly quick to prepare since you don't have a lot of intermediate steps or incubation points, which allows it to be a high-throughput assay. However, it is a little bit on the expensive side. The reactions that take place during the BCA assay are temperature sensitive. When you switch the incubation temperature from 37 to 60 degrees, you increase assay sensitivity. Using commercially available reagents will also increase assay reproducibility. If you decide to perform your assay on a microplate and your plate reader does not have a 562 nanometer wavelength, you can always use the range of 540 to 590 nanometers without really compromising sensitivity. Keep in mind that this is not an endpoint reaction, meaning that it doesn't stop at any particular point in time. Therefore, you want to make sure you stagger your cuvettes while you're measuring the absorbance and or spread your samples across the plate. It's also important to take all of those measurements within a 10-minute window. If you have a lot of samples and you cannot follow that time frame, then just repeat your assay several times as needed. There are several different ways in which you can analyze your data, but if you decide to use a quadratic response, you can expand the dynamic range of your assay. Please make sure to watch our best practices lesson of this course um, to get more detailed information on how to prepare a standard curve and how to analyze your data. And we also have a step-by-step -step workflow on the BCA protocol on our BCA workflow Lambda U course.